Hi everyone, my name is Sophie Hurwitz and I'm a current senior undergraduate at Duke studying neuroscience, global health, and child policy research. Today I'm going to be presenting my project, Ensuring Equity in Early Childhood Autism Services, a North Carolina Landscape. This project is both my graduation with distinction thesis topic, as well as my final project for the certificate in child policy research. The study aims were twofold. First, to understand the barriers and facilitators to early childhood diagnosis of autism, specifically among Black and Latinx children here in North Carolina. Prior autism research suggests that there are vast disparities with regard to race and ethnicity in terms of which children are receiving timely diagnoses. The second aim was to use these findings to develop specific implementation recommendations for both providers and policymakers. With regard to methodology and informants, my co-PI and I conducted seven virtual focus groups with 26 stakeholders from across the state of North Carolina. Our sample included pediatric clinicians, researchers, advocates, social workers, and policymakers and government agency representatives. It's important to note that these were cross-sector focus groups, and my co-PI and I intended on scheduling as many different sectors as possible within each group. Nine of our stakeholders, almost 35%, self-identified as people of color on our pre-focus group demographic survey. In this same survey, five stakeholders, almost 20%, self-identified as a parent of a child with autism. Not surprisingly, our stakeholders descri described inequities at every step in the service provision process here in North Carolina. In accordance with prior research, Black and Latinx children in North Carolina are less likely to be diagnosed with autism, are less likely to be referred to additional service providers, and may be less likely to receive services even after a referral. Based on these key themes and findings, my co-PI and I have created three short-term recommendations for service providers. The first of which is to recognize the importance of cultural humility and to acknowledge the history of medical and systemic racism in our country. Doing so will help begin to remediate these disparities with regards to race and ethnicity. Second, we hope to increase education and awareness of the signs of autism spectrum disorder. Many of our informants explained how many primary care pediatricians may be unfamiliar with early signs of autism or uncomfortable referring to specialists. And lastly, it's crucial to involve parents and caregivers in the diagnosis, treatment, and referral of patients. Of course, parents and caregivers are the experts in their own child, and as providers, it's necessary to involve them in every step of the autism service pathway. My COPI and I also discussed four long-term goals, the first of which is to encourage program directors to recruit providers diverse in race, language, and geographic location. Here in North Carolina, a majority of our healthcare practitioners are white, English speakers, and reside in urban areas typically associated with academic institutions or research centers. Next, it's important to lobby policymakers to begin to close the gap between public and private intervention services. Those who have public insurance are often eligible for one set of services, and those who have private insurance are often eligible for another set of services. There are folks who fall in between this public and private divide, and it's crucial that this gap begins to close in order to create equitable care. Third, we must work to create stronger community partnerships and referral networks. Not only is it important that providers are able to refer their patients and families to appropriate services, but it's important that providers are able to refer patients and families to accessible services. Lastly, it's necessary to incorporate parents into the autism workforce as mentors and as advocates. Many clinics and hospital systems are doing so, but parents are often volunteers and are not compensated for their time and effort. By bringing parents into the workforce as paid employees, providers and policymakers alike can begin to show how much we value their input and lived experience. Thank you so much for listening.